the only whiting of frogfish cards. I just want to talk to you a little bit today about these little faceted boxes. A very good friend of mine, Roz, who is also a fellow Stamping Up demonstrator, showed me how to do this little faceted box and I love it. And I've seen a couple of videos on it and it makes such a perfect little um, box to put some sweets in, which this one has at the moment. It's got sweets in it. And it also can be used for bombonetes or any sort of um, tiny gift that you might like to put into it. And I started playing around with it to see what other variations I could come up with. And so in doing that, I've come up with a medium sized box using the same technique. And this one I've made for a child. It's just got ladybugs all over it. And I put a little ladybug on the lid. And then this is a large faceted box. So this one I used the Delia and used an antique brand on the top. Um, this was this would fit a small bottle of perfume, a number of different things, a candle, all sorts of different things. So I thought I'd do my own video making a medium sized faceted box just to show you that if you put some thought to it, you can fiddle around and, and do things slightly different and like this I've made them a bigger size. So you need to start with a piece of cardstock that is <coughs> 11 and a half inches by 8 and 7 eighths of an inch. In a small faceted box I chose to use a different colour to the grey. I used the rich razzleberry on the smoky slate but with the medium size box and the large box I've used tone on tone so this is Bermuda Bay so I use Bermuda Bay ink on it and this is elegant eggplant and I stamped it with elegant eggplant and inked the sides with elegant eggplant plant just to define those lines, make it stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to do the same with this particular box that I'm demonstrating to you and I'm using Perfect Plum card with Perfect Plum ink. And this little stamp that I'm going to be stamping on it actually comes from sitting here. It's a little pot plant with some flowers in it. So I'm just going to use that to make my own pattern on the plain cardstock. So you don't have to be too fussy with stamping. Sometimes I stamp off the page. Sometimes I stamp on the page. Sometimes I stamp in a pattern. Sometimes I don't. So it just depends on how you would like it to look. But today I'm just going to run in diagonal lines across the page so that I get some flowers on every panel. I'm going to flip the page around and go in the other direction. large stamp, a small stamp, as you've seen, I used the Dahlia on the Bermuda Bay and it looks lovely with a big large stamp. Um, and I used a small stamp with the Lady Beetles, so it really doesn't matter. 
but you want it to look something a bit like that. So then we need to score it. And we're scoring it on the vertical first. So the first score is... <coughs> sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. So I'm scoring it first at two and a half. here is at the top of the scoring board and then you are scoring it at to the second line second line only so you go through the first line and to the second line only you are scoring it at two and a half then five then seven and a half then ten Then you're rotating it round so that you're cutting from the other end of the page. You do not want to score through this middle section. So then we are scoring at one quarter, then two and three quarters, then five and a quarter, then seven and three quarters, then ten and a quarter. Then you need to remove your scoring board. With your steel ruler you are going from that one quarter line to the first line on the other side of your page and you are scoring on a diagonal and then you follow that scores it a bit and then you follow that pattern as in a zigzag so you're going to your second scored line here, but back to the first scored line down here. Then you are going from the second scored line to the second scored line. Then you are going from the third scored line to the second scored line. Then you are going from the third scored line down to the third scored line. Then you are going from the third scored line up to the fourth scored line. Then you are going from the fourth scored line down to the fourth scored line on this side. Then you are going from the fourth scored line at the bottom to the fifth scored line at the top. And then from the fifth scored line at the top to the edge of your cardstock and that will create a zigzag effect. Now I have a print off sheet here and a sample for you to see. This is a small box sample but it has all these little triangles folded in that section so it's creating a zigzag effect through the middle something like this diagram through here okay also on this diagram you can see I have shaded out areas all this needs to be chopped out you do not require any of that shaded area so I'm just going to do that now Take out this little section here. And we take this section out here. And then we cut into there. 
down halfway and across. Try and cut this out in one section because we're going to use part of this stamped cardstock to make the flower for the top. And if you cut it out in small sections, you might not have a piece big enough for you to have your flower on top of the box. Then you're going up halfway again and cutting across. Also another tip, if you try and cut on the inside of your scored line rather than cutting right down the middle of your scored line, it just makes it a little bit easier to fold those sections of the box in. Then we are cutting down this diagonal line. There's a diagonal line there, we're cutting down that. And then taking that one quarter of an inch off that other side. So you end up with a piece that looks like that. And this looks like that. So then you are going to cut on either side of that scoring line down to the down to the vertical scored line, the vertical stored line only. Do not do not cut past that point just down to that line. And then you're doing the same on all of these four panels as well. Because that makes the bottom of your box. is that that's where the box joins. So we need that to connect it and make it into a box. Okay, so now it's just a matter of folding and boning all your scored lines. I always like to fold it back on itself. Everyone's different, but I like to fold it back on itself just to make sure it's a nice, clean, crisp fold. Sorry, I'm going off screen. Whereas the tape 
tends to adhere instantaneously. So on this size box, I would put two strips of tape. sides together so you peel off the back backing of the back of the tape like so and you bring that angled edge up to this angled edge like so and just press down and that's pretty much all you need to do except for connecting the bottom so what I like to do when I'm gluing the bottom together I like to fold the top in and get it into place and then make sure that that section that I've just folded is facing me so then I will glue three sides only of these flaps that are sitting out on the desk, like so. Then turning it upside down and placing the back flaps in first, like so, then bring in the first front one, making sure that they're nice and square with each other, and then the last one on top. So that's the easiest way I find to getting the positioning right for those panels to fold in underneath, because the bottom of the box is folded at a different direction to the top. So that's the front of the box, hit the top of the box here, and that's the front. And it comes down into a point. So the bottom is offset. So if you lay it down like I just showed you with your flaps, your four flaps of the bottom of the box facing out to you, you know which two are at the back and which two are at the front. So that you get them a nice crisp fold here. You don't get any join lines here. The joining lines are here at the back, which is what you want. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do with the large flower punch from Stamping Up is this section here where I've cut it off to make the lid of the box. I will just cut a large flower out of that, like so, and I'll also cut a small one with the Petite Petals Punch. Now I'm going to try and find somewhere where there's some flowers, probably there, like that, and just punch that out as well. Okay. I like to also give my flowers a bit of uh, 3D appearance, so I tend to squash them up a bit in my palm by pushing my knuckle down into the centre of the flower, just to give it a bit of a lift. And the same with the little one, just to give it a bit of a curve so that it looks a bit um, structured and not so flat. Then we're just going to ink the edges, so I've just got a blender, a 
and my perfect plum ink pad and I'm just going to go down each edge just to define it a little bit. It just gives it a bit of um, character, makes it a little bit of depth in the box. If you open it up and bend down your internal panels, you can just ink those as well. It just finishes it off nicely, like so. And you can close it all up. Then it's just a matter of gluing. Oh, sorry, I'm jumping the gun. Need to ink around the edge of our flowers with the perfect plum. large flower so I'm actually going to stick it in the middle of that flower and then put them on the top of the box so I'm just going to put a little bit of glue here first and put this one in the middle of that like so and then again I'm going to put a good dollop of glue in the middle of that because this is metal and we want it to adhere. And then I'm going to try and line up the big arches with the little arches so that this sort of sits true to the larger flower, like so. Now that'll take a bit of time to stick because it's quite heavy. Then I'm just going to stick it to the lid of the box. With a good dollop of glue. And I'm just going to place it on there like that. Fiddle around with things just because you've seen someone demonstrate it to you. Don't be frightened to experiment and, and change things up a little bit. Because as you can see, I have created, I've been taught one method. I have created three different faceted boxes and they all look very different and very unique in 